Go. Welcome to the South Division Humor Speech Contest. All of our contestants have been briefed okay. and being eligible to participate in today's contest. As there are only four contestants, we will be announcing only a first and second place winner for today. And I would now like to announce the speaking order. Contestant number one for the Humor Speech Contest is Patrick Shaw. Patrick Shaw is contestant number one. Contestant number two, Beverly Millicent. Beverly Millicent, contestant number two. Contestant number three, Melissa Gardner. Melissa Gardner, contestant number three. Contestant number four, Julie Amico. Julie Amico, contestant number four. I'd like to now introduce our first contestant. East of E, Patrick Shaw. Patrick Shaw, East of E. Madam Toastmaster, distinguished dignitaries and distinguished guests, fellow Toastmasters. I have a confession I want to confess to you this day. And that confession is, I was a PK. Being here at Christ Universal, does anyone know what it means to be a PK? I feel all of your pain and suffering. <laughs> I am a part of your family. I grew up as a PK, which is a pastor's kid. Oh. And <laughs> that was quite an experience. They used to call my father Reverend General John Paul. <laughs> General because he ran his ship very regimented. You had to eat at a certain time. You had to go to sleep at a certain time. You had to go to a bathroom at a certain time. It was very regimented. And it's confusing because he never had any military training. <laughs> we called him John Paul because it was in honor of a very popular Catholic, Catholic pope. And my father did not believe in democracy. He ran a theocracy. It was as though he was running the Vatican. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I can recall growing up when I had to meet with my father, he said to me, listen, because he was running this area, we called it Eden, he had a constitution, or you may call it the Four Commandments. And it was as though he walked to the outer chambers and talked to God and came downstairs and talked to my sister. He said, there are four things that you have to do within this place I call Eden. Number one, I want harmony. I don't want any discourse. I don't want any arguments with my mother, with your mother, me or your sister. It has to be harmony. Number two, I expect there to be peace. No shouting, no loud music. It has to be complete peace here. Number three, I expect you to work hard in Eden. This is a critical thing. So when I tell you something, you have to do it. And number four, I reserve the right to amend and change anything in the Constitution. <laughs> now, I'm going to only tell you one story, actually two, to be honest with you, about my experience. The first story has to do with something what we call playing cards. My father would say to me, I was about 16, and when you're within this Eden, the virtual Eden, you begin to wonder what can you do, because I had to stay within the parameters of Eden. 
I couldn't go down the street and play. I couldn't go to the park. I had to stay within the parameters of Eden. So he said, Pat, we're going to play cars. He told me to get some material. We went outside. I'm cleaning the tires because in my mind, I realized that as a PK kid, of course, they had a Cadillac. So I was going to detail that Cadillac and make it look wonderful. And at the end of the day, I was going to be given the keys. I clean it, I detail it, I run upstairs, I had a little hat, I put it on, I said, Dad, I finished my car, I'm ready for the keys. He looked at me, boy, get out of here. That's not another game. We didn't say we were going to play that game. That was the reality. That was work ethics that I had to learn. One day, I'm sitting home, enjoying eating, and I get a phone call. One of my friends, Joe, comes and says, look, Patrick, and to protect this club's name, we're going to call it the Club of Good and Evil. <laughs> you need to come to the Club of Good and Evil tonight. I mean, it's going to be off the hook. You've got to check it out. I'm excited, but I had a rule. I could not go outside of Eden. But I felt there was time for my liberation. <laughs> so I bucked up. I said, all right, Dad. I want to go east of Eden. <laughs> east of Eden. My dad looked at me and said, you want your freedom? I give you your freedom. I'm going to punish you. Go upstairs. You go into the brig. I was crushed. But I was not deterred. So late that night, I'm turning my bed. I said, I want to go east of Eden. <laughs> I felt the call to go east of Eden. And so I had some special ops training earlier because when I was cleaning the gutters, my dad tied a rope, a rope around me for precaution. So if I fell, I wouldn't fall all the way off the roof. And so I took my time and I said, all right, I have my special ops training. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to tie the rope, go down, go out to the front of my house, met my friend, and I went east of Eden. <laughs> now, because we are at Christ Universal Temple, I'm not going to share with you what I did east of Eden. <laughs> but I will share this. When I got back later on that night, and I'm headed up to the house, all of a sudden, the gates of Eden open wide. <laughs> and there was the Reverend General. <laughs> I knew I was in trouble. He said, son, I'm going to do this because you want your freedom and you took it. I want you to go upstairs and I want you to pick the belt that you want to experience the responsibility of your freedom. So I go upstairs. I find the biggest belt I could. And he said, all right, son. He took me. He said, I want you to drop the pants. I dropped the pants. But I had to do, if you ever remember this movie called Glory, with Denzel Washington, I felt I was going to go out tough because I wanted my freedom. So I stood there, I looked, and he went on to lash. He said, grow up a child in the way that you should go, and he shall not depart from it. Ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries, Toastmasters, I often miss Eden. When I'm out here, I realize that I'm got the experience to, of going east of Eden, but I always relished the moments that I was in Eden. Thank you.
speech contest is Ms. Beverly Millicent. Speech title, A Little Knowledge is a Dangerous Thing. A Little Knowledge is a Dangerous Thing, Beverly Millicent. Postmaster, distinguished guests, and other guests. I'd like to talk to you today about an experience that I had. This started as a wonderful <coughs> day. I had just found out that I was invited to my hospital's annual golf outing at a championship club. Wow. You see, I normally volunteer for this event, but this would be my first time actually playing golf. You see, I am a huge sports fan, and this was around the time that Tiger Woods was just becoming popular. So I had seen a lot of Tiger on TV, so I knew a little something about how to play golf. Well, the first thing I did was run to our director of PR, who I knew was a golf fanatic. I said, Dan, I'm worried. I'm worried that my teammates are going to be mad at me because I'm not going to be able to see how far I hit the ball. After all, I had seen golf on TV, and I knew Tiger always had to have this camera that showed you how far he hit the ball. Dan looked at me and said, Beverly, if you can hit the ball far enough so that you and your teammates cannot see how far it went, they're going to be happy to have you on their team. I was naive. The next bit of advice that Dan gave me had to do with the golf clubs. He said, Beverly, don't go out and buy an entire set of golf clubs to play golf for one day. Did I listen? I think not. I went shopping. I went to Sport Mart and Sports Authority, Play It Again Sports. I even had the nerve to go to an actual golf store. Bought a lovely set of clubs. Next was my outfit. No self-respecting first-time golfer can wear just anything <laughs> besides. I knew there are rules regarding what you can wear on the golf course. <laughs> so I went out, bought a new pair of shorts, new golf shirt with the required collar. I am happy to say that even I didn't fool myself into thinking that I needed actual golf shoes with the little bitty spikes. After all, there was a limit to my insanity. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I learned about playing golf versus volunteering for golf is you don't have to get up at the crack of dawn. But more important, I get to act with all of the self-importance as the other golfers, including <laughs> having someone else get my bag out of the car. I think I like playing a lot better than volunteering. <laughs> Naturally, as a first-time golfer, I got as much advice as I could from anyone who would talk to me or who was still willing to talk to me uh -huh. by the day of this event. <laughs> One of the best pieces of advice I got was from a colleague who had really become a very good golfer. She had taken lessons from a golf pro, and he explained that when you're just beginning to learn to play golf, it's best if you stick with just using two clubs, the number five iron and the putt. So you'll use the five iron for every stroke except for when you get ready to hit the ball 
right in the hole for which you'll use your putter. Okay? Golf Pro says five iron and putter. Did I listen? I think not. <laughs> I had seen golf on TV. <laughs> so the day finally came. It's a warm and sunny day, and I am visualizing my success. I walk up to the first hole. I grab my number five iron. I get ready. I get set. I swing and hit the ball. But instead of my ball going 350 yards, my ball goes to the right and only 10 yards. Oh. <laughs> but I was not discouraged. Oh no. <laughs> I go up to the second hole. I have my five iron. I get ready. I get set. I swing and hit the ball. And the ball goes straight. Yes. About five yards. <laughs> but my confidence had soared. So I go up to the next hole and like my other teammates and like I saw on TV, I pull out my driver. <laughs> well, as you can see, this is a big golf club. This big knob at the end. So I get ready I get set, I swing, and completely miss the ball. <laughs> well, you pretty much get the picture as to how the day went. In fact, my group only played 13 of the 18 holes because we became hot and tired and thirsty. <laughs> but you know, I learned, I learned something that day. You know what I learned? I learned you can't play golf from watching Tiger on TV. <laughs> but I still have my golf clubs. So if you're ever looking for a fourth, then toss me. speech contestant number two, Melissa Gardner. Three. Three. Sorry. Three. <laughs> number three. <laughs> Melissa Gardner. Page 256. Page 256. Melissa Gardner. Toastmasters, dignitaries, and honored guests. Dubbed by most of the media as mommy porn, this book, <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, has sold tens of millions of copies worldwide. So, what is all the hype about? Should you read it? And is it really that scandalous? I hope by sharing my experiences, I can answer some of these questions for you. Now, 
it was easy for me to decide that I would read Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm a librarian. <laughs> and I'm not embarrassed to be seen with romance novels with covers like this, for the love of Scotty McMullen. <laughs> or even this. I had a more scandalous title, but I couldn't show it in church. <laughs> <laughs> now, even though it was easy for me to decide that I would read this book, it took me a lot longer to get. <coughs> Fifty Shades of Grey came out in paperback in May of 2011, and I just got to read it last month, a little over a year later. In fact, in my library system alone, there are still over 600 holds for this book. Wow. Now, since I didn't have a say in when I got to bring the book home, I happened to bring it home on a weekend my dad came to visit. <laughs> when he saw it on my coffee table, he blurted out, You're reading that smut? I knew right away what he must have been referring to, and I stepped in to defend myself. Dad, it's not that bad. I'm already on chapter six, and they haven't even kissed yet. You know dads. He wasn't going to back down that easy. You haven't made it to page 256 yet, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Which I hadn't. <laughs> that gave me an idea. <clears throat> okay, Dad, I'm going to prove to you that it's not that bad. I'm going to read page 256 aloud. <laughs> <laughs> now, you should know at this point, me and my dad are pretty close. Ever since I got my tongue pierced in college, we've been able to talk about the most uncomfortable of subjects. I could not even read the first two words of page 256 aloud. Now I know. You want to see what's on page 256. <laughs> so, what is Fifty Shades of Grey all about? Well, it started out as fan fiction for the popular teen series Twilight. Fifty Shades of Grey is not for teens. It definitely has adult content. I would describe Fifty Shades of Grey as an erotic Cinderella story where the naive young college girl falls in love with the handsome, albeit messed up, gazillionaire who has a little red room of pain where he likes to act out his dominant fantasies. I've also been known to describe it as, whoo! <laughs> can't quite put my finger on why this book, above others, has become so popular. Is it Mr. Gray? He's handsome, rich, powerful, mysterious. Nah. <laughs> I mean, most men in romance novels are above average. You ladies know what I'm talking about. <laughs> One woman I talked to said it was the psychology in the book that appealed to her. His troubled past and the other crazy characters who come into the picture. Perhaps it's the taboo of the bondage element, which, as one librarian described it, made this the Lady Chatterley's lover of 2012. I think it's just good marketing. <laughs> I mean, now women or even men, can pick up one of these e-readers, download it in secret, and they won't be accused of reading smut. Every time the book is banned, it's on the TV. Dominatrix are being interviewed. Women are hosting secret book clubs in their basement. <laughs> and adult novelty sales are on the rise. Hey, even my dad knows about page 256. 
<laughs> and now that you guys know a little bit more about this book, you can stop by the library and check it out, or any of the others that I showed you, or download it in secret. <laughs> now, I said at the beginning I was going to try to shed some light on how scandalous this book is really. I recently learned how relative of a term that is. A small library in downstate Illinois requested some of the VHS tapes that we had deleted from our collection. I said, sure, what would you like? Oh, anything would be fine, Hollywood movies, but not R-rated, of course. Of course? Did they even make Hollywood movies that aren't R-rated? <laughs> I realize that my version of Risqué and theirs are two totally different things. And ours may be different as well. If you're not sure, check out page 256. <laughs> See if you can read the first two words. Ooh. Thank you, Madam Our fourth contestant, Julie Amico, how to have a pleasant CTA ride. <laughs> how to have a pleasant CTA ride, Julie Amico. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come up here and have the pleasure of speaking in front of you. Now, I must say, I don't know how I'm going to follow Fifty Shades of Grey, because I have heard about the book. I have not read it, but have heard about it. And rest assured, I do know that this is the Human Speech Contest. So if I am not funny, please feel free to laugh. I am okay with Mercy Laughs. That is okay with me. At this time, I'm going to talk to you about how to have a pleasant CTA ride. Just don't ride the CTA. <laughs> that is the only way to have a pleasant CTA ride. <laughs> or you will find yourself in the position like I have found myself, coming back to having no car. But that is another speech. I have come up with a list of do's that I think everyone should do when they're riding the CTA. Yes, this may be presumptive of me, and that is OK. Somebody must be presumptive. We must come up with a list type it up, have it placed on every train, train car, and I think we will have a pleasant ride. The first thing of dudes that we must do as riders is take a cough suppressant before you get on the train. <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting on there listening to Jingle Bells in the cough version. A cough here, a cough there, and a cough everywhere. <laughs> as grown people, you would think we would know how to cover our mouths, but we don't. So please, take a cough suppressant. 15 to 30 minutes before you get on the train so that it may be most effective so that we may all have a pleasant ride. Are there any teachers in the room? One teacher? Why? Or two teachers? I have seen some of your failures. If you have taught kindergarten, they did not get inside voice. Now, when we're on the train, the conductor says, please, you know, modify your conversations. 
please turn down the music on your phones. Do you think anybody listens? <laughs> I do, and those who have earphones do, and then there are those such as your failures <laughs> who do not listen at all. I'm on the train, and not, you know, I don't necessarily mind eavesdropping if it's an interesting conversation. <laughs> you know, I'm learning something, how to save money or, you know, what stops to avoid, what stores to go to, which has the best sales. I'm okay with eavesdropping on those conversations. But when you get to, girl, she don't know me, she don't know me, in 15 minutes I had to hear about how she didn't know her. <laughs> I wish I did not know her. <laughs> train. <laughs> well, I could, but you know, they, some of them conductors are quick on closing that door. You try to go to another car, you might get left. <laughs> that has happened to me a couple of times. That's why, you know, if you must, you must. But if you can avoid it, please do. Another thing that I suggest as a do, and this will be wonderful for everybody, is wear protective clothes. <laughs> <laughs> because I am not convinced that they clean them cars. <laughs> now, there are workers there making excellent money, which is okay, I'm, I'm good with that. Talking to the young ladies and the young men, socialize, <coughs> wonderful. I'm not a hater, socialize, cake. For those of you who don't know what cake it means, that's you know, sweet talking, trying to get to know about somebody. I am okay with that, but when you are in your, your regalia, your CTA, neon, yellow and orange, uh, you know, Parker, that means you're supposed to be cleaning up the train. If you look at the platform, those bags are empty. They are flat, dead, no garbage going in those bags. <laughs> Next time you get on the platform, check it out. You'll see, I'm right. You know, put a broom in your hand. Let that person know that you're sweet talking, that you got a job that you want to keep it sweet and tall. <laughs> get that plexiglass clean. Get some Windex, something. You know, the fingerprints, children be on the train. They touch everything. One of the last things that I suggest and I would like, and this is one of my personal favorites, and I'm really, really hoping that it's implemented. And I do not want to get anybody in trouble. I'm not saying go overboard with it. But if you have children, give them something. Uh, Benadryl, <laughs> hot toddy, something to calm them down before they get on the train. Matter of fact, do not feed them on the train. Do not give them juice, pop, water, nothing. I was on the train yesterday coming home with my nice little long two-hour ride on the red line where they stole my car, but yet I must go to work. So that is why I must, and that's why I'm imploring everybody to follow my dues. Little girl had Cheetos. Why would you give somebody Cheetos? You know, that's just going to mess up the seats more. And a two-year-old? The mama took the Cheetos. What did the baby do? Start hollering. Do we want to hear this? No. <laughs> Do we want to hear mama, 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 mama? Because those of you who are parents and children, who have children, you know that your children call you all the time until you acknowledge them. Do these people acknowledge their children on the train? No. They sit up there and let them call all the time. And you know, I. I don't have any children, so I don't care about kids. I mean, I do, but I don't. <laughs> I do and I don't. I mean, you know, I want them to be well. I want them to exceed in school, all of that. But when you get to running and stuff, I just want to trip them. <laughs> fall out, do something. If they fall out, they quiet. Give us a break. Be nice to the other passengers. That's all I'm asking. You know, I, the, the train is just so distracting. I sit up. On the train and in the morning, I try to be a good steward and read my Bible. I get off the train, if you ask me, did Jesus weep? I tell you, no, I don't know if he did or not. <laughs> because I cannot concentrate because there's so much going on on the train. It is so distracting. But if we can follow these rules and implement them, I think we will have a much more pleasant train ride. I said pleasant. I didn't say good. I just said pleasant so that we may all make it to our destinations. And I thank you. It's so <laughs>
Toastmaster, all the ballots have been collected. Toastmasters for two and a half years now and I think in terms of wanting the audience to know something when I joined Toastmasters I thought you read someone else's speeches I never even knew you had to write your own and then when I first came to listen to a contest I can remember saying no way on earth would I ever do it. So um, it's nice to know that my club has encouraged me and pushed me to come to this. Beverly, thank you for being here. And here's your certificate for participating. Melissa <laughs> Gardner? I'm a member of Broadview Club 3303. Yay. And I am coming up on my second year of Toastmasters. Um, I just want you guys to know that librarians are not totally boring and we're not all about <laughs> people, which I hope you got from my speech. But also, as a person, I like to do things like scuba diving and skydiving. So, wow. so it's not just Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm a rounded person. <laughs> Thank you so much. Toastmasters, I would say, February of this year. So I'm still uh, working on my CC and hope to get this, get it before the end of the year. I'd like to invite our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing to the speaking area to share some of the highlights of what is happening in the district. Ms. Donna Weston. is, if you have not paid your dues, <laughs> we still have a few clubs. Thank you to all of you that have. Uh, probably what you want to hear most about is the fall conference, which is only a couple weeks away, October 27th, Willowbrook Holiday Inn. People that win these contests today will be competing with the other people from the other divisions and we'll get champions at the district level. That's going to be fun. The evaluation contest will be in the morning, I think maybe around 9.15. The humorous contest will be toward evening, maybe 5, 5.30. We start out the day with a bang. Has anybody here earned 
an educational award since July 1st. Then you all need to show up for the Achievers Breakfast, free breakfast. <coughs> and our keynote speaker, Craig Valentine, is going to be speaking at the Achievers Breakfast. Next we have the Banner Parade. How many clubs have participated in that before? Oh yeah. Get up on stage, you get a few seconds to give a little speech about why your club is great, and then whoever wins, they actually have a panel of judges, that club gets free registration for the next conference. Now we have some seminars going on, a lunch where Craig Valentine's going to be speaking again, he's going to be speaking again <laughs> at the dinner, so he's speaking three times, and he became a world-class champion when we had the conference in Chicago back in 1999. Anybody a member then? Okay, a few of you. <laughs> How exciting! Anybody have any questions? I'm trying to think what else I. Uh, have Where's to Willowbrook? About. Willowbrook is at 83 and 55, and we have had some TLIs there before. We've had a special event there before, and I do remember they are pretty good food. <laughs> so Donna, do we have a date for the next TLI yet? Yes. Who knows it? December 1st. December 1st. Thank you. December 1st. 1st. Have all the speakers been... Skokie? Skokie Holiday, That's Holiday Inn. Inn. Holiday Inn. There will be more information about that out shortly. Please. How much is the conference? How much is the conference? Well, let's see. Until... October 12th, yesterday, you could <laughs> register your whole club for $99. It's gone up to, I think, $129. But that's for the whole club. So if you get five or six people. And they're guests. And guests, right. That's very reasonable. Individual, I think it's up to maybe $45 for an individual to register. So that's where guests. Goes. Free. The guests are free. So particularly at the club level, if you register, every member of your club bring a guest for free and enjoy the contest, which are earlier this year, are they not? The contests yes. are a little earlier than we're accustomed to having them. Well, as I said, the evaluation is in the morning around 9.15 and the humorous is, I think, like 5, 5.30. So it's an early, early evening. So I also earlier mentioned uh, Donna as being known as the Queen of Clubs. Look at this. Look at this nail job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the other thing you don't know me is Halloween is my favorite holiday. For 26 years, I've been going to work in a costume. No one else does. I work at a corporate location. <laughs> I am the only one that goes in contests. Wow. And it started when my daughter was four and I was taking her to daycare and she was getting dressed. I was dressing her up. She goes, Mommy, how come you're not wearing a costume? I said, We don't do that at work. She says, You don't have any fun? That's it. So I do some kind of a costume. <laughs> and I've come to Toastmaster events in costume, and I might be again at the fall conference. I already got clearance that I can do it. So <laughs> getting prepared. I believe they are also still soliciting for volunteers to assist at the fall conference. There's no such thing as too many volunteers <laughs> in the conference. Is returning to that one-day format, which for some of us is great. You don't have to worry about paying for a networking event that you're too late to enjoy. Was there a question in the back? Yes, I, I want um, you to go over the uh, Achievers Breakfast real quick. You said July 1st. What about the people that got uh, education in June and May, before, after the conference? Are those, are those people qualify also? Linda can answer that. As district recognition chair, it is. I believe the cutoff date was April 20th. I will check. I but it's from the last yeah, conference right. to this conference. I think it's the 20th of April. Yes, and I believe so, also that they have until October, October 20th? 20th to achieve. Right. And receive an invitation to the Achievers Breakfast. When you get that invitation, you must RSVP. You can't just show up at the conference and say, hey, I submitted my education award, so I should be able to get breakfast. They have to pre-order these meals. And believe me, the hotel gets really, 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 really upset when we ask for additional meals on the day of the event. Yes? I was just thinking I didn't say that. Thank you. This year, we are going to have a red carpet. 
So some of you have probably got invitations in the mail, but they ain't got mine. I thought, who from Lake Zurich is sending me something? It must be a wedding invitation. And I opened it up, and it was a Toastmaster invitation. For me last year as a division governor, I became a distinguished division. So I was invited. I had to go into a survey monkey and say that, yes, I will go. So any clubs, the president, any clubs that were distinguished, the president has been in, um, invited to walk down the red carpet for areas, for divisions, and of course for the district. So that's a big thing, and I believe we will be doing it around 3 o'clock. That's when they're doing the awards. They actually have an actual time set aside to, to hand out all the different awards. Does the district have a Joan Rivers right now that's going to play that part? <laughs> Show up and you'll find out. <laughs> they haven't told me everything. Our judges are, have uh, returned the, the results, and I know everyone has been waiting very patiently to hear those results. I've asked our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing also to stay here and help us to present the awards. And just to remind you that for the evaluation speech contest, there will be a first, second, and third place <coughs> winner announced. And for the humor speech contest, we will only be announcing the first and second place winners. Okay. Well, I forgot my special effects. May I have a drum roll, please? The third place winner of the South Division Evaluation Contest is Ron Florsch. Division Evaluation Contest, Greg Thompson. <sighs> and our first place winner of the South Division Evaluation Contest who will go on to represent the South Division at the district contest on October 27th, Sandra Washington. Temple, and um, we've had a wonderful time here today. 
but I had invited our minister, uh, the senior minister, Reverend Derek Wells, to this event. And of course, we've got a seminar going on, and he's unable to make it. But at this time, I would like to introduce you to our assistant minister, none other than Reverend Galen McDowell. If you come up for just a couple. <laughs> Thank you. We're honored to host these type of events. We want to continue to see it grow and prosper and train you all to do all that God created you to do and be. Mm -hmm. So thank you. God bless you all. You're obviously uh, welcome and invited to come to the seminar. We have uh, Dr. Rocco Erico, who's the number one Aramaic Bible expert in the world. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that, literally. His, his, his mentor translated from Jesus' language the Bible into English. He's doing a seminar right now on the uh, book of Daniel. So if you have an opportunity, it's right through those doors when you walk out. God bless you. On behalf of our senior minister, the Reverend Derek B. Wells, the other ministers, and all of the staff and volunteers, thank you. God bless you. And continue with the good work. Take care. Thank you. Go out, be safe, see you at the fall conference. <laughs>